69 degrees, a little bit of a breeze. A little unlike Jacksonville, maybe, for this time of year. The 100th or 101st all-time meeting, depending on who you listen to. Georgia has a 54-44-2 and two advantage, and they've won four of the last five. A couple of years ago is when Florida had their last victory. Florida won the toss and deferred. Trey Smacks got it teed up. Kiaris Jackson waits back deep for Georgia. And here we go. And the dogs will start at the 25-yard line. As we take a look at the Papa John's lineups. And it all starts with the guy we just talked about, Stetson Bennett, pride of Blackshear, Georgia. Just turned 25 yesterday. 21-3 and as a starter. And the rest of the group that joins him offensively. Brock Bowers, the All-American tight end, a mid-season All-American already here in just his sophomore season. Kenny McIntosh behind Stetson Bennett on the first snap for the Bulldogs. Lad McConkey in motion. And it is McIntosh in a big opening already. And a first down run, a pickup of 11. A year ago, Georgia strengthened their football team, their defense. This year, it's their offense. They are scoring points. They're throwing the ball. Their stars, their offensive line, no question marks at quarterback. They've got this offense purring. Rashad Torrance made the tackle, but not before an 11-yard pickup for McIntosh. Out to the 36. Again, Lakanki on the move. Counter play. And this one's going nowhere. McIntosh, no game, but we've got a flag down. Umpire called holding on Georgia. Offense, yep. number 69. 10-yard penalty. First down. Ratledge, the right guard, guilty of the infraction. As you look at the Florida defense, Rashad Torrance made that first tackle. He had a great game last year. Two interceptions and a fumble recovery in this matchup. So it's back to first and 20. One of those Georgia football players right from Atlanta. Sure he wants this one, right? Absolutely. Stetson Bennett. Has a look at that defense. Empty backfield. He's going to flare it out in the flat. Whistles and the flag again. Not much noise here. You might think, you know, oh, crowd noise. They're not oh, ready, but it, it's seven. fairly quiet right now. So the right side of the line had a little trouble here with the penalties for Georgia. False start on McClendon. The right tackle. So after one positive snap, Georgia's heading the wrong direction. John Edwards on the toss. And Edwards, good run. Got it back out to the 29. So Georgia, Gary was talking about Georgia, their rankings. That was pretty good. Yeah. A little different team, though. At this point, a year ago, coming into this game, after seven games, Georgia was throwing the ball an average of 19 times a game. Right now, they're throwing it 37 times a game. Just a different look. And throwing it around to a lot of different receivers. 20, in fact, have caught a ball this year. Bennett throws on the run and throws a strike complete. Kiaris Jackson, first down. You can see the confidence they have. Stetson Bennett with his athletic ability, being able to come out of the pocket, on the run, turns the receiver to the outside. Kiaris Jackson does. Easy pitch and catch. So, what was it? First and 25, they pick up the first down. Yeah, they got 18 on that one to move the sticks. Just outside the 46, the first down. Two receivers to each side, but Georgia will keep it on the ground. McIntosh, only about two before he's hammered. 
the inside of that defensive front Desmond Watson part of that tackle and he is a big part of their defensive front. Yeah when I talked to coach Munkin the offensive coordinator for Georgia I said how are you going to attack this defense he said I go would you go tempo he said we'd like to we're not great at it but I'd like to keep that big guy on the field and see how good a shape he's in. Well, he's 415 pounds. <laughs> Second down eight. Bennett down the middle and almost intercepted. Rashad Torrance, who I mentioned had two a year ago, and he should have had that one. And third down is the down that Florida has been struggling on, and they had a gift here. Could have been an inter, should have been a turnover. So now on second down, now third down comes up. This has been the down that has really determined the last three outcomes in this Georgia Florida sequence and Florida has really been struggling here on third down Bowers was the intended receiver on that last play and well overthrown third down and eight Georgia 52 percent third down team Bennett scans the field all day to throw and this one's into coverage as well incomplete and the Gators will get off the field on third down and they played man to man coverage rush three Plenty of time for Stetson Bennett to pick out a receiver. We'll watch coming across the field here. This Florida defense sees it, runs with it. Nice job by Bernie that time, turning with the receiver as he comes across the field. The linebacker anticipates the throw and makes the defensive stop. So, a punting situation. Brett Thorson in to kick for Georgia. And Xavier Henderson waits on the other end. And takes the fair catch around the 16 yard line. So Florida's defense does their job. Their offense next up when we come back. As we check our lineups presented by Papa John's. And it starts with number 15. Anthony Richardson brilliant in the game. We saw him against Tennessee. Inconsistent at times. But always dangerous. The rest of the offense that joins him, Justin Shorter, is their home run hitter as far as yards per catch. He's their deep threat. From the 16. Play action. Richardson in trouble already. And he got away from it. And this is what he does so well. Stiff arm and a pickup of about five and then a low hit. On the sideline, no flag. Gets up limping a little bit, though. He did. That's right. It was a low hit, and it was close to being a late hit. I think it was by, by Bullard. Yeah. Yes. Right at the end of the play. Again, this is the part of the offense, the unscripted offense that he does so well. And right there is that shot. Yes. And that knee took a weird angle. See if that bothers him. A strange looking handoff. No yeah, he's limping badly, very badly. Even after the handoff, he was limping badly. Watch Bullard come in at the end of this play, straight arm. Still had his toe on the grass. That's a clean hit. Yep. Hit him in the five. Really yes. wasn't as low as I thought it was the first time. A wow, huge first play for four. They're down at six. Montrell Johnson in the backfield with Richardson. Four man rush, Georgia. Richardson throws a little bit low, and that's blown up incomplete. Zipper, the intended receiver, and Kamari Lassiter let him have it. And no thought that time from Anthony Richardson thinking about moving on in the pocket here. He knows his legs is bothering him. He's going to make the throw, and he goes off slowly. That'll bring it the punting unit. Jeremy Crawshaw in the kick from his own 10 yard line. Nice punt. McConkey waits on it at the 27. Got back close to the 35. So each team's had a shot at it. And you got to worry about the shot. 
the Florida quarterback took on the first snap of the game. Update on Anthony Richardson. He came off the field. A trainer came right over to him, but he waved him away immediately. He put his hands in his head. He exhaled really a big sigh. You can tell that he's frustrated, but as of right now, he's a go, guys. Okay, Jenny, thanks. I was just going to ask you that, and you answered my question before that chance to ask you. So we'll keep an eye on him, but so far, so good, I guess. Meanwhile, Georgia's second possession from the 34. Stetson Bennett off the play fake throws and that's a perfect strike to Brock Bowers. So this two tight end formation that everyone in college football is noticing and so effective for this Georgia football team. Washington's in, Bowers in. He's the matchup problem. He's as big as a tight end. He runs like a wide receiver. Right. Really tough. How do you put a linebacker on him? Do you put a safety? Can a safety even run with him? Everyone in it's like watching Kelsey play for Kansas City. I mean, just <laughs> hard to really find a way to stop him. Picked up 24 on that one. It's Bowers in motion. First down of the 42. Bennett rolls, throws. Bowers the other way. And another 10 yards or close. So there's a lot of different ways to call an offense. And one of it, you can be multiple formations. The others, you can go tendencies from the defense. What do you want to attack? The third way is, as Todd Munkin told us, get it to our guys. Get it to our playmakers. And that's what they did in those two plays. This time a loss for Kenny McIntosh of about a yard. So you establish that pressure point at tight end. And then you see how the defense adjusts. What will open up from them maybe overcovering Bowers? Ooh, big collision, McIntosh and Vontrell Miller. Yeah, Vontrell Miller right there. That's the guy you got to block. If you're going to run the ball against this Florida defense, you've got to block number 51. When you pass it, you got to block number one, the edge. Throw out to the other tight end. Big O, Darnell Washington. And he's a load. They list him at... 6'7", 270, and he says, I'm, I'm a little bigger than that. Yeah, so a, a year ago, he was primarily a blocker. This year, his skills have really shown that they are trusting even splitting him out to throw the quick hitch, and he gains yard. Doesn't look like he's running that fast, but he is. He can cover some ground yes, with those long legs. So Georgia in the red zone at the 14. Interesting. I brought up tempo to co the offensive coordinator, Todd Munkin. He goes, we might, we might not. They're using it, aren't they? Yeah, they are. First and 10 at the 14. Dejon Edwards will get the carry. And he worked about three out of that. Georgia in the red zone this year. 42 out of 43. 98%. 29 of those touchdowns. Yes, but they need touchdowns. Missouri, remember, held them to field goal. Yeah. Came back to almost cost them a football game. So right now, Florida saying we hold them to a field goal. Empty backfield. Stetson Bennett getting his troops to move. And now he does have company in the backfield. Quick throw to the outside on a wide receiver screen. All the way to the one is Dylan Bell. The true freshman, another one of those recruits, Dylan Bell. Because of the injury to Donnie Mitchell, number five, this guy's going to get some balls, and he's got wheels, doesn't he? Edwards, touchdown, Georgia. That was pretty. Started off throwing the ball, but balance. Three runs, four passes, and they knock it into the end zone. Eight play drive. Yes, half of them run, half of them pass. That's the balance that this Georgia offense loves. Prior getting him down to the one yard line, that quick screen to the outside. Another good athlete. Those recruiting classes pay off, don't, don't they? they? And then Dejon Edwards from a yard. Todd Leslie in for the point after. Snap was a little wide. Bennett got it down for him, though, and the kick is good. Love the aggressiveness on the call prior to the touchdown by Georgia. They know they need touchdowns instead of field goals. Aggressive pass. 
pays off short yardage touchdown. Dejon Edwards, sixth of the year, and Georgia up. They all knew that he'd use them, and on that last drive, Stetson Bennett, four for four, three of them to his tight ends on that drive to set up the touchdown. You got good tools? Might as well use them. They did that smarter on that whole drive, as you said, 66 yards in three minutes, and Bennett was perfect. Jack Pudlesny's got it teed up. Xavier Henderson and Trevor Etienne are back deep for the Gators. This one's returnable and will be Etienne on the two. Made a couple guys miss. Got to the corner. Nice run back. Trevor Etienne with a good kick return. And Anthony Richardson, we look at him. He's ready to go. Final words from Billy Napier. And he'll bring it back out. We'll see if he's limping or anything. Seems to be running okay now. Yeah, I, I kind of feel though it's kind of like that Bryce Young thing. You know, you don't know until you really go. Yeah. You know. So right now it feels okay. We won't know until he tries to turn on the Jets. Like Bryce didn't know until he threw the pass. Exactly. After a 33-yard kickoff return, Gators. First snap here in the 36. ETN, he just had that kick return, trying to bounce it outside, maybe got a half a yard. Georgia defensively, they may not have those number one draft choice type stars, but Jalen Carter is one of those, and he's been hurt since the first snap right. of the season against Oregon. But we might see him, we got an eye out for him, right? Yep. Richardson sidearms it over and drop for a loss. Javon Dumas Johnson, rangy linebacker. So, of course, everybody knows it follows Georgia. They lost three great linebackers to the NFL, but they're awful excited about the guys they got. Dumas Johnson, and they're all good tacklers, just like the three guys that left. Third down and long. And somebody jumps. Flags fly. It's going to be third down and longer. All star offense, number 65. Hard yard penalty. Third down. Georgia's defense this season, seven new starters. They rotate in the second in the nation. Actually, giving up less points this time than they were a year ago. Two shutouts already. And Brad Jalen Carter is in the game. Big 88. There he is. The superstar out there. In a third down at 16 situation. And here he comes. Richardson got it to ETN. The open field. He's not going to get a first down as he got rocked at about the 42 yard line. Yeah, but the pressure, as you said, from the inside, you know, only seven sacks for this. Georgia defense, but they haven't had that guy all year. No, that's That'll right. make a big difference. When there's room to move up in the pocket, it's hard to get those sacks over the edge. It'll be tough to get room in the pocket when 88 gets healthy. So cross shot, a punt. Blank McConkey again back deep. And he's Gonna kick it. I thought he was gonna throw for a second. Does a little Aussie punt and it goes all the way. Made the end zone. That was close. Could have been perfect. There's a flag down. There is no foul for one knee to the kicker. The punter was outside the soccer box. So once he got out there in the Aussie well, they, they, punt situation. He fooled you and they fooled the defense. <laughs> he thought he was going to run as well. A little and, tap there yeah, at the little, end. A little nudge. So they pick up the flag. And Georgia will work from the 20. When we come back, a little less than five minutes remaining first quarter. Number one Georgia leading Florida 7-0.
told us he knew Napier was going to be successful from the first moment he got to Bama. Guys, he said he was meticulous with his attention to detail and one of the most intelligent coaches he's been around. Billy from North Georgia, Kirby from South Georgia. It's always hard to coach against guys that are friends, but in this business, you run into those just about every week. Well, and in this league, everybody knows everybody. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Possible not coach against a friend. <laughs> Edwards to the backfield with Bennett. And he'll get the carry. And a nice run. Picked up five. Jason Marshall brought him down. So if you look at this Georgia defense uh, against Auburn, excuse me, Georgia offense against Auburn, they had their best day running this year, ran for 292. And this Florida defense not only struggling on third down, a lot of different areas. You know, they're 108th in the nation in stopping the run, 185 yards a game. Just four years ago, Brad. They were eighth, giving up only 100 yards a game. I remember that big defense, difference. big difference. Yep. Second down and five. They fake the toss sweep and come back the other way. Bowers caught it twice, and he's still running. First down, Georgia. After the 45. I know Brock Bowers is a great athlete, but he didn't need to be a great athlete on this one. He just ran across the formation, and nobody found him. Just had to find the handle. Marcus Rosemary Jack Saints going the other way the wide receiver. Brad said he had to catch it twice. There's one. Yeah, three. Might have been three. Yeah, a couple bobbles. <laughs> All American last year as a freshman. Kaki comes in tight on the right side where those two tight ends are. They're going to run it that way. Edwards, nice move in the hole and just short of the first down. Georgia committee rushing. Last year it was Zanir White and James Cook. And now it's Dejon Edwards again. McIntosh. Edwards still running. One of the things with this Georgia offense, they've got their starting right guard back in this offensive line. That much number 69, a road grader who would have started a year ago had he not gotten hurt the first play of the first game. He's back, 330 pounds. Think about it. He would have started for the national championship game team a year ago, back in one of those road graders. Well, Edwards picked up 14 in the first down. McIntosh comes back in now. Kendall Milton, also part of the Georgia rotation, has been injured. Little dinged up. Back down the middle, Darnell Washington still taking Gators with him to the two-yard line. This formation, we see it all over professional football. I predict we'll see more and more of it in college football. Two tight ends. It's like having seven offensive linemen on the field. McIntosh will get stopped at the line of scrimmage this time. After that 26 yard pickup for Big Darnell Washington. So you got your five offensive linemen, then you bring Washington in at that tight end spot. And then he just goes out, little eight yard pass, nothing to it. The guy's six, seven. How can you miss him, right? <laughs> you don't want to be trying to bring him down, that's for sure, if you're a foot shorter. True freshman Oscar Delp in the game, number four, another of those tight ends on the field. And they've got Eric Gilbert as well. That's their four tight end group. Second and goal at the two. Kenny McIntosh into the middle of the pile and into the end zone goes the whole group. Touchdown, Georgia. So how about this, Ness? Back-to-back -back drives. Eight plays each. This time a little more heavy run. Five runs instead of four and four again. But a little bit of everything. And they know inside, get the double team, run right at the double team. Van Pran and Ratledge run right at it. And if you need a little push, push them in. You know, Georgia against Auburn, they had a short field because Auburn went for a fake punt, and then they had a McConkey punt return. Two short fields to make it 14 nothing. This time, no, they drove the ball for their 14 points. 
Todd Lesney in for the point after. Out of the Stetson Bennett hole. Eighty yards, eight plays. The big chunk to Darnell Washington. That got Kenny McIntosh down close, and he did it from two yards out. Including these unique drone shots are brought to you by Goodyear. Stetson Bennett, three for three on that drive, four for four on the previous scoring drive. Had a, had a tough throw early in the game when Burry did a good job, on, but all the rest of the throws have been easy. Yeah, one, one overthrow that should yeah, have been an interception. Right. Everything else, seven straight to get him close, and his running backs have done the rest from short range. And now Florida in a two-touchdown hole. Everybody knew that the Georgia tight ends, watch Ventrell Miller. Now, he is a very aggressive linebacker, but watch how Georgia takes advantage of his aggressiveness playing the run too much simple little crossing route now playing up on first down again playing linebacker got to find the tight end right where are you going there's nobody out there look at that hold the throw so florida's had three and outs on both their drives they go back to work here third series and down 14. Little toss. Ricky Persaw for about three. Second down and seven. Only 18 total yards for the Gators so far as we approach one minute in the quarter. Hit and drop for a loss. Montrell Johnson and Nolan Smith, who does that pretty frequently. And Nolan Smith's one of those returning great football players, going to be a number one draft pick this year. Reads the mesh point. I don't think they believe right now that Anthony Richardson's going to run the ball. They're playing the running back, not the quarterback. Third down package. They're going to bring Jalen Carter back on the field, big 88. There you see him. Lined up on the right guard, and Anthony Richardson knows he'll be coming. Great matchup with Torrance. Best offensive lineman for Florida. Third down and nine. Play fake. Extra man coming around the edge. Throw is tipped. Incomplete. And Richardson had to pay the price at the end of that. Yeah, Justin Shorter was open. That should have been completed. Ball sailed on Richardson. Good job up here handling the stunt by the Florida offensive line. Nicely room to throw. Just lets it fly. Too high. That's a six foot four receiver. You're not going to beat Georgia making those kind of mistakes. So cross shot a punt again. Cocky calls for the fair catch and waves everybody out of the way. And they were rolled in around the 30. Two seconds remaining in the quarter. Let's go back to the studio for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Well, Ness, TCU's Max Duggan only needs a couple seconds. Big day for him. 341 yards and three touchdowns, including this free play on fourth and one, up three in the final minute. That's how you go for it. Horn Frogs 8-0 for the first time since 2015. C.J. Stroud, another big day as well as the Buckeyes poured it on. Happy Valley to stay undefeated as well. Back to you. All right, look, thank you here. Undefeated Georgia, the number one team in the country. Up 14. The final play of the first quarter. McIntosh for a yard or two. And that'll bring the quarter to a close. So it's been all Georgia. Their defense has given up virtually nothing to Florida. And their offense has been spooky to watch if you're a Gator fan. End of one. Top ranked Georgia. Up 14. Debo SEC on CBS as we head into quarter number two. Georgia leading 14 to nothing. 
And they've got the ball at the 32 yard line. Their fourth offensive possession of the game. Stetson Bennett going to go deep near sideline. Got it. Uh, wait a minute. I don't know. Maybe it's an interception. That's what Florida's saying. I thought Georgia had it. I thought right he, looks there. he comes down with it. Before he, he got down, I think it was ripped away on the play. What a play. Great defensive play. Concentration. Perez Johnson. Did he have it before he came down or was it ripped out? Wow, what a play this is. That was Jadarius Perkins. It was. Pardon. He's got it. He's got it. Does he come down? Boy, it's close, isn't it? Dominic Blaylock's the guy that had it in his hands, and I thought it was a catch right there, and then... Perfect throw. A theft. <laughs> great catch, great steal. What are you going to do steal. with this one, Gene? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to start off with one that's so easy, guys. But, yeah. Uh, I would say this to you. In order for this catch to be a completed catch by the receiver, he has to land with a foot or a body part on the ground with possession. What about Yes, does back? he have possession when it's airborne? What yeah, but I back? think at the time, if his back is a body part, so if he's in possession with that when his back hits the ground in full possession, then I believe he's down by contact. My feeling on that play, though, is as that body part starts to hit the ground or right before, he doesn't have firm control of that, and I believe the defensive right. player actually gets great possession play. at that point. And a great job by the officials on the field, guys. What a huge play. And now Richardson in trouble. Got rid of it as he was about to be sacked. That's going to be intentional grounding, though. He wasn't out of the pocket, and there was nobody there. Ball didn't cross the line of scrimmage. Strong enough to avoid the sack, but I don't think he's going to avoid the intentional grounding on this. It was Chris Smith that was putting the heat on from the safety blitz. Yep, there it comes. Intentional grounding. Offense, number 15. The ball in place of on the foul. Lost it down. Second down. I get the feeling that Georgia and the Kirby Smart defense, Will Muschamp, one of his coordinators, feels like they've got a wounded quarterback back there. Yep. They're going to come after him. If you're just joining us, the first offensive snap of the game. Richardson on a scramble was hit just as he got to the sideline by a Georgia defender and came up limping. And it's changed the way that Florida's running their offense right now. Throws on the run and he throws a strike complete to Persaw. And he limps forward. Looks like he's going to be a pocket passer for this game. That shows his arm strength right there. Sure did. That baby got there in a hurry. Oh, yeah. When he knows the target and he loads, he can deliver, can he? For sure. They haven't converted on third down yet. They've got a third and seven here. Henderson in motion. And a flag flies. False start. Stop and fraction. Offense, number 65. Five yard penalty. Go down. So that'll back him up. Here's the play we were talking about. First offensive play of the game, and that hit right there on the thigh, and then an awkward landing on that leg. And Anthony Richardson has been. Not exactly sprinting out doing anything since. Do you then. think it's high enough to be like a hip pointer type injury? Oh, no. Yeah. It's right in that area. Yeah. He's probably going to feel worse tomorrow than he does right now, but playing out adrenaline, third down and 12 for his Florida offense. And he's got a scramble to his left, directs traffic, and throws incomplete. And another flag. Yeah. I think of the center this time, Egwakan number 65 is going to get called on this one. Probably be declined by Georgia. Yep. Going to be fourth down and long. Holding. Offense. Number 65. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. That'll bring out the busiest Florida Gators so far. That's Crosshaw, the punter.
Ladd McConkey for Georgia. Way back there on the other end. This time it's a run to the left before the Aussie punt. Conkey will just let it go out of bounds. Perfectly placed. 13-26 remaining in the first half. So far, it's all top-ranked Georgia. I don't think you'll get another shot at him unless it's <laughs> the end of the season. The last game. <laughs> that would be his fifth shot at Georgia. <laughs> tight ends shifted out right here. Both the two tight ends. Another look for this Gator defense. First down from the 17. Bennett pump fakes one way and lofts it for oh, Washington. Man. And he sort of short armed that one. Can't throw it any better than that if you're Stetson Bennett, can you? They faked the quick screen, first down call. Nice action by the quarter, but got him wide open. Puts it right on him. Man. Six, seven, and short arms do not <laughs> go together, do they? No. Second down. He knows it too. Bennett already 121 yards through the air. And that one interception that was a swipe at the very end by Ladarius Perkins. Quick slant. And close to a first down, Kiaris Jackson might have it. Stetson Bennett, I mean, everybody talks, you know, a year ago in this game. I mean, he was struggling in the first half of this game. Threw an interception right at the end of the half. Three minutes to go. They have only three points on the board. I can only imagine all the Georgia fans oh, yeah. on the message boards. Come on, put in JT. We can't win it with this guy. Right. Well, then all of a sudden, everything changed. Had that touchdown pass at the end of the half. Three turnovers. And from there, a national championship quarterback. And 29 touchdown passes last year. This one's knocked up. Bowers tips it to himself, and he'll score. Touchdown, Georgia. Seventy three yards. I thought this one could have been another pick, right? Yep. Same thing, the wheel route, the wheel route that was so good to Florida. Jeez. Wow. That went up about every body part of both those guys. Yeah. Bowers finally got it. Ness, and if Bernie turns around and uses two hands, he can actually easily intercept the ball. He tries to swat it with one, gets a bulldog bounce right to Bowers. And now the chance of UGA, UGA's Pat Lesney with a point after. So he throws a perfect pass to Washington. He threw a perfect pass earlier for an interception. Now he throws a kind of behind it, and he gets a touchdown. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. He was on that one. Bowers, the long ball. Bennett, a smile on his face. 21 to nothing. Number 19. Right. <laughs> looked over the bench, had a big grin on. It was an interesting three passes over to the left side right there, wasn't it, for him? ETN, uh, the kick return out to the 30, but there's a flag down. And it's all probably going to be coming back. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 48. Half the distance to the goal, first half. So Florida puts itself in a hole again with the penalty on the kick return. So Ness came across an interesting stat. This Florida team has rushed for over 200 yards in five of their seven games. But they're facing Georgia, who hasn't given up a 200-yard rushing game since 2018. <laughs> 53 straight games. The last team to do it was Joe Burrow's first year at LSU when they ran for over 200 yards against Georgia. 53 consecutive games. And they only give up 83 a game this year. They did better than that even last year. And right now they're going to give up nothing. Well, four drives, all three and outs for Florida. Montreal Johnson behind Richardson. They'll get the carry. Nope. One tackle. 
Yeah, tough five yards. You just wonder how much of the offense is not there with because they're not using any of the running attack with the quarterback. Yep. Let's check in with Jenny. Yeah, Bulldogs outside linebacker Nolan Smith. He got injured at the end of the first quarter. The team touched his right shoulder. He yelled in pain. He was inside the injury tent for about 10 minutes. Came out, tried to push against a teammate, grimaced immediately. He is out for this game, guys. Okay, and he's got a brace on that shoulder on the sideline. One of their best defensive players and one of their main pressure guys. Richardson throws on the run in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Dante Zanders. So I was just about to say that Georgia got up by 14 points a couple of years ago early in this football game. Kyle Trask came back and beat him, throw for 474. But before I could get the story, it was 21 nothing. <laughs> I can't find another story. You right waited now. one touchdown too long. <laughs> right. Richardson only 29 yards throwing so far. Third down and six here. Trying to avoid their fifth straight three and out. Clock winding down. Might not get the snap off. Just did. Throw out in the flat, and they'll get a first down out to the 20. Montreal Johnson. And they did it. Montreal Johnson has followed. Billy Napier from Louisiana transfer he and Torrance 54 and 7 the two guys that came and when we talked to Billy Napier said I should have took a couple more. Yeah, so we got some other guys around the league right now. A couple at LSU. I didn't want to steal everything out of the coverage <laughs> before I left. Richardson deep middle overshot an open receiver in Marcus Burke. Was right down the slot four vertical just a bit too high Had a little bit of a high one to shorter this one was a little tougher throw he had to put some air under this one a little more touch thought the first one was a kind of a gimme throw this one was much harder second down and ten Richardson got away somehow and he's going to throw it as far as he can. Man out there, double coverage, incomplete, no flags. Justin Shorter was down there. Richardson, I don't think, got all of, got too much air under that one. Looked like a punt when he let his hit. He threw it about 55 yards in the air, but he needed to throw it 75 yards in the air because Shorter had to stop. It became a jump ball two against one. And the DBs were all bumping and jostling, and I think that's a fair fight right there. You throw a ball up like you said, like a punt. I think everybody has the right to go get it. Malachi Starks and Chris Smith, the guys that broke it up, and it's third and ten. Again, Jalen Carter in there, and he's in a stand-up stance right in the middle of that defensive line on a stunt coming around the corner. The throw complete, but well short of the first down. And it's going to be another putting situation. Well, Chris Smith, Christopher Smith, number 29, is probably their smartest DP. Moving everybody around, reads the place quickly, solid tech. All the Georgia defensive backs are solid tacklers. When they get you in that long yard of situation, if you don't throw it past the pins, past the first down, they yep. usually fake the tackle. And Chris Smith, one of those other Georgia Bulldogs that is a midseason All American so far. Tasha, the punt. And McConkey just backs up and lets it roll. They roll dead around the 34. Well, Georgia's going to have good field position. They've got 10 minutes and change all their timeouts. And more importantly, a three touchdown lead. On a comfort. Stetson Bennett and Georgia. Three really good passes, one an interception to Blaylock, another perfect pass as a drop, but then the last one kind of gets even for Stetson Bennett. Poorly thrown ball. Brock Bowers turns around the opposite way, takes his eye off the ball, spins around, and Stetson goes, all right, we're even. Yeah, we're, we're even. If you're thinking maybe that's Brock Bowers' longest play of the year, 73 yards, it's not. We have the 75-yard touch, uh, rushing touchdown. And a 78-yard reception against South Carolina. 
Baker Bennett over 200 yards here in the first half. Branson Robinson in the backfield. He'll get the carry. Oh, carries it for about four. Paramount Plus is your destination for peak screaming. Celebrate spooky season by streaming Orphan First Kill, Monster High the movie, and more picks that go bump in the night. Head to ParamountPlus.com. Try it for free if you dare. This has been spooky if you're a Gator fan so far in this first half. All Georgia. Minus five rushing yards for the Gators. Here's the throw out in the flat to McIntosh going nowhere. That'll lose yardage. Kamari Bernie, nice play defensively. That might have looked good on the blackboard, but that didn't look once it got out of the field. That didn't look like it had any chance at all. Bernie smelled that out right away, didn't he? Yep. That's a big stop, Jordan. I mean, if Florida's going to get back in the football game, they've got to win this third down right here. They've been awful all season. When Billy Napier in the bye week looked at his defense, he said it basically comes down to we have not been good on third down. They got off the field on Georgia's first drive. They'll try to do it here. Third down at 11. They'll come after him. And they will. Bennett with a guy right in his face and had it swatted down. He was trying to get it to Bowers. And it's fourth down. Real aggressive that time. Cox bats it down, but that was an aggressive call from this Florida defense. Three man line, but they bring the house. They bring five different players, and uh, the ball would have got through. I think he still would have been tackled, right? Where are you calling it? Brent Cox, former Georgia player, comes up with the stop, and Thorson will have to punt. Henderson waits back deep. He's going to take a shot at it from the 21. Henderson, nice return. Or just stretching it out, but he'll get it to the 33, maybe the 34 yard line. Real late flag on it. I think shove in the back is going to be called here by the. Right about on the 35 yard line. I thought somebody got pushed. Scott Walker, our referee. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number zero. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. So you finally get a good return, and I, I just believe it happens right there, right at the end of the play. Yep. Eight forty two till halftime. Twenty one nothing Georgia. Get nonstop sports news, expert picks, and the biggest highlights on CBS Sports HQ, the free 24 7 sports news network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. I'll be joining the HQ team when we're done here. And what do you do if you're Florida? Got to get something moving here on offense. ETN got a couple. So this offensive line for Florida is the best in the SEC. They've only given up five sacks so far coming into this game. One so far. But that's with a mobile quarterback. Now let's see how they hold up with a guy who's most likely going to be throwing right in the pocket. That's where he is right now. And he's going deep, far side. And caught. Beautiful throw and catch to Justin Shorter. He really was. Keely Ringo that time, number five, was in perfect phase, but jumped too soon to knock it down. He's there. He's there. He jumps. He comes down. He misjudges it. Perfect throw. It's Shorter. Another big play. Shorter who came in averaging 22 and a half per catch, and he comes up limping after that 40-yard reception. ETN as they fake the end around ETN went to the left side for a couple. So that's what you have to attack when you're playing Georgia. Much like the Alabama defense surprise Kirby was there and built the defense. They're going to play man to man to the outside. Their corners are going to cover you. You have to attack it. You have to go on that one on one coverage. That's the play back shoulder throws double moves. Go deep on them three four times a game. Challenge those corners. 
ETN behind Richardson at a pistol set. Pumps, and then he does go out in the flat to that spot. Completes it to Henderson. Henderson brought down at the 43 by Bullard. Tried to get the fake of the quick screen of the right receiver and go deep. But watch this Georgia defense. They do not bite. They're back. Nowhere to go with the wheel route. Nowhere to go deep. Forced to drop it off to the flat. And it brings up another third and long. Third and 12. Yeah, I think they're thinking four downs here, though. Got two chances for this one. They don't need three points. And with that in mind, they run it here. And it's only a yard game. Jamon Dumas Johnson made the stop. And that's fourth down. That's how you play defense. Those big guys inside make piles, make piles, bounce it outside. Oh, my God, that's Carter in there, isn't it? Yeah. Holy cow. He took on his two people, bounced it out wide, and that's why everybody's saying he might be the first defensive tackle drafted coming up in this next draft. Finally getting some snaps. After the injured ankle and then an MCL, the big number 88's in there. And Florida's going to take all this time, I guess, and then take a timeout and decide. It's a good going. idea. You know, I mean, if, if you're going to go for it, I mean, you don't need much more time to try to score. Four minutes is plenty. Of, well, five and a half is plenty of time. So we'll take the timeout with them and find out what the Gators have up their sleeve on fourth and 11. In That's from around the country. Uh, the Geico halftime report. Here, all Georgia until that last drive was only a 42-yard drive. Big chunk of it was Richardson to shorter, and then it stalled, and they were forced for the field goal, but Mahalik got it from 52. And now his kickoff goes into the end zone. Georgia will come out to the 25. Biggest stat in this quarterback comparison when they look at it. I'm going to predict, I haven't seen it yet, but the rushing yards is not up there for Anthony Richardson. Okay, I mean, you got to have that in 200 yards throwing from Stetson Bennett. What a difference this team is. I remember coming in, I told you they only threw coming into this game a year ago 19 times a game. They're throwing that already, yeah, right? That's exactly. 16 throws? Jeez. They're going to throw some more. Huge stop by this Florida defense. Can they get out of the half? They didn't get out of the half last year. Bennett stops and fires in and out of the hands of McConkey. Oh, and Cal, second big drop. I don't think it was tip. McConkey slows down, turns around and drops it. Hit him right between the eight and the four. Jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No complaining. You got a gift the last one, right? Yeah, that's right. It all evens out. Bowers is the guy that's had the big day so far. Second down and 10. Kenny McIntosh moves up to the side of Stetson Bennett, takes a hand off, and McIntosh had a little head of steam going, and then Montreal Miller slowed him down. Yeah, good offensive block again up front going through that right side. That's where they've been attacking Van Pran, Ratledge, McClendon. Ooh, Ooh, better it stop. And very close. Might have it. gotten it. Uh, really? I don't think so. I'm just looking for the linesman coming in where he put his foot. Man, I don't think he got to the line. It's going to be short. I don't think it's worth the gamble. Cannot give floor to the football there. Chris McClellan. Well, the guy's there to put the stop on him, along with Brenton Cox. So, Florida caught a bit of a break on the drop ball, then they took advantage of it. On the field, as the ball carrier was short of the line of game, the previous play is under further review. Might be right yet. Yes. No, not a chance. Really? <laughs> Nothing here yet. Odd angle to look at it from it there, right? Yeah. So give us a better shot. I, I have to admit, you, you know, they don't, they have to get to the line, though. The yellow line that you saw 
That's not it. It's right on the line. Gene Steratore is with us. Gene, what are you seeing? You know what, guys? I, I, I feel like he may have made the hard white line, and I agree with Gary. I think it's the beginning of that hard white line. I think what you're challenged with right now, no pun intended for replay, is they've got to see the football right. and not just the, the player. And I think that's what they'll be searching for as they go through each of these replays is a shot where they can now see the ball in, in relation to that line to gain, and, and they'll search for that right now. But without that, they won't change that. That would be my, my thoughts on this. You know, his helmet crosses, it appears, but you, I haven't seen the ball yet. Yeah. So they take a look upstairs. John Bible is our replay official. Big call for Billy Napier. You're not right? kidding. He's hoping it's not a first down. And they did it? stop him, too. There was no forward progress or anything. They stopped him cold. Big call coming up here. After review, the ruling on the field, the ball curve being short of the line of game, stands. Fourth down. Fourth down. Spattering of booze from the Georgia fans. The only thing I wonder, with this amount of time left and three timeouts, would Georgia try to draw them off sides here? Do anything? And they got their offense, offense out there. Yep. Well, okay. Here we go. Well, I know what. You know, will they just try to draw him off? If I'm Florida, I'm alert for trying to get a cheap penalty. But if it's a quarterback sneak, look for the push from behind. Long conversation going on at Georgia Huddle right now. They're perfect on fourth down conversions. They come up to the line quickly, moving McIntosh. Yeah, they're not going to. And now they move Bowers. They're moving everybody, but Florida's not giving in. No. Bennett, first down. It was a gamble, and Kirby won it. More power to him. Florida thought they were out of it. They had the punt team out, then another look, then a replay, and they decided to go for it. Nice design here. They run up. Sugar huddle. And then you say, are they going to go for it? Oh, no, they're going to try to draw us off. This is just the design. We got Danielson bad on this. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't draw them off. They no. took me off, I'll tell you that. <laughs> So Bennett with a quarterback sneak and first Kirby, down. Kirby did it on purpose. Too. <laughs> Fleet Flicker. And Fleet Flicker, Bennett loads, fires, incomplete. Makati, the intended receiver. Good job by that Florida defense that time. Torrance is back there. Fleet Flicker on first down. That's the two guys right here. Read your keys. If somebody goes out, stay with them. They both do. Nice job. Receiver broke after the ball was thrown. No chance. So second down at 10, 339 remaining in the quarter. And John Edwards in the Georgia backfield has one of their touchdowns today. They'll send him in motion. Bennett goes short to Donnell Washington. Might be a first down and very close. A little motion that time completely vacated the middle of the field. Easy, like warm ups. So that's such an easy pass. One guy goes in motion, linebacker leaves. Stetson Bennett knew before the snap who he was going to give the ball to. Third down and a couple of feet. Edwards, first down, out to the 49. Dejan Edwards, continues. Excuse me, Brad. Dejan Edwards, one of the four backs in the rotation. No Milton today. Dejan had that good drive against Missouri when he came in in the fourth quarter. Dejan had a huge game against Auburn. Three rushing touchdowns in that one. Hard to find playing time here. After it is. Night. Just ask McIntosh. He played behind a couple guys for a couple of years. Zamir White and James Cook and those guys. DeAndre Swift before that, so sometimes it's hard to get in there until you're an upperclassman. Bennett, flush from the pocket, gets rid of this and throws it to the Florida sideline. Yep, out of the tackle box though, as long as the ball goes past the line of scrimmage. Doesn't have to be anybody there. Good pressure from that Florida defense. 
Stetson last year was 10 out of 19 for 161 yards. And a touchdown and today on the season. 290 a game. Yeah. The touchdowns a year ago, they were just rolling it up. A lot of that had to be great field position from their defense. Yeah. Rock Bowers in motion on second and ten. They're going to flare it out to him, and he took a whack yeah. and incomplete. Bowers could feel it that time. As he was catching the ball, he could feel Bernie out there. He sees the linebacker. He knows he's out there, and he tries to reach over and say, Can I? <laughs> he couldn't do it, could he? No. <laughs> One of the few things he can't do is no. quite stretch those arms out. Not with a linebacker. This is not basketball where they can't touch you. They're going to hit you. That was going to be a rib shot if he moved in. Exactly. Farther. Third down. And 10 to go from the 49. Number Florida. Did they get the stop on third down? And it throws. Almost a one-handed catch by Rosemary Jack Saint. Just can't quite hang on to it. He laid out. Yeah. got one paw on it. Good That's coverage it. that time, though. Marshall right in phase, had to be perfect. It was a good throw, but that's what happens. You get in phase, you make it, the quarterback hit a perfect throw, and it was not. But now they're fourth down and long, and Brett Thorson will punt. As Florida got their stop, they'll get the ball back. This one goes out of bounds around the 16, I think, is where they'll spot it. So if Anthony Richardson would like to get rid of those ghosts from last year, as Jenny talked about in the open, this is just about the time yeah. in the half when it all got away from them. Yeah, they had a horrible final couple minutes a season ago. Yeah, started with the fumble. I thought he was going to get a first down. He didn't get it. First play later. And Nolan Smith ripped it out and then interception. Yep, then interception. Then a pick six. Nolan Smith an interception, then a touchdown pass, and then a pick six by Nicobe Dean. So let's get rid of those demons right here. <laughs> Don't want that to happen again. Remember, Florida gets the ball first in the third quarter, so if they get any kind of points here in the next two minutes would be a nice way to head to the locker room. Whoop! Almost dropped. Henderson. Well, he's going to take a loss on this one. It's just a little push pass. Remember, Georgia right here, all three timeouts. How aggressive will Kirby be? Will he look? After this play, we let it run him down. He's got a big lead. Interesting thing, looking back at that tape from a year ago, he had all three timeouts when they were backed up on the two. He didn't use any of them, and they scored 21 points. A little bit of a discrepancy in yardage today so far in the first half. I remember 40 of those yards was in one pass. Now they keep it on the ground. And only going to be two or three. Kirby, Johnson. Kirby will take it now. Absolutely. The way they've controlled third down in this game. Florida one for seven. And they're going to have to prove they can do it because Kirby said, I dare you. TNT 5G pylon cam as the Gators trot back out on the field on a third down and long coming up. Georgia gets a stop here. They'll get the ball back and still have two timeouts remaining. Ricky Pearsaw in motion settles in to the slot. Richardson has to scramble this time. Pocket collapsed in a hurry. And again, he takes a shot late at the sideline. And he won't get the first down. And he also went out of bounds, so Georgia does not have to use another timeout. You have to imagine with that injury, that, that shot that Anthony Richardson took early, 20 to 25% of the Florida offense went down the drain. All those run calls and his scrambles, they just don't have it now because of 
he's less than 100 percent admire the way he's playing yeah. but they don't have the same game plan cross shot a punt. oh a shit. did he get away with it and it's going to be good field position for Georgia around the 45 maybe it's right in front of the Georgia bench or Stetson Bennett is going to put that helmet back on and have another crack at it here with 62 seconds to go in the half. Over the years since Kirby Smart arrived in Athens top four in recruiting battles every year at and least right at least and the big one on the bottom those five stars make those other recruits that much better the stars when you seek out those stars those are the guys that make your average players sec players so florida wasn't bad no but not a, to match up with alabama and georgia and that's where you got to be in this league so stetson bennett who had a big first half already looking for more Double pumps, throws, completes, and it's first down and out of bounds to Dylan Bell. Boy, that's a gamble throw right there. You know you got confidence when you let that one ring to the outside. Brenton Cox, number one, is standing right there. He just rips it right by him. Cox puts his hands on his head like, oh, geez, I can't believe I didn't get it. Threw a fastball right by him. That wasn't a first down, a yard short. That's that gunslinger side of Stetson Bennett that comes out all the times, right? There's no doubt about that. McIntosh, there's another quick throw to McConkey. He's got the first down. He's got it right about to the field goal line. Still 50 seconds and two timeouts for Georgia. Yeah, Troy Dean got a huge top tackle that time, or he might have been off and running. And they go hurry up here as the clock just starts to wind again. And it on first down. Flush to his left and throws it away over on the Georgia sideline. Pressure was coming from Amari Bernie. Watch Dean right here. There's nobody behind him. If he doesn't make this tackle, just get some because he was gone. And McConkey is fast. Just that close. McIntosh will come up as a receiver now in the slot. Empty backfield on second down at 10. Stetson Bennett, quick throw. That's incomplete. Broken up. McIntosh, the intended receiver. He's a good get, a good receiver out of the backfield, just not that time. Yeah, that's a good read by Dean again on that play. Playing his rule. Receiver goes inside, take the next guy coming out. He's right there on the throw. Trey Dean's played a lot of ball for the Gators. Remember the last third down, Florida brought the house. They blitzed him on the screen pass, remember? Let's see if they dial up that blitz again. They're in Podlesny's range right now. Third down and 10. Bennett loads, fires back shoulder to McConkey at the 10. Flags are down. He's inside the 10. I think it's going to be on McConkey this time. Shoves the defender right by with his left hand. Marshall's in phase, yep. kind of gives him a push. Pass interference. Defense, oh, number three. Wow. The penalty is the call. He's over the play. I was with Post you center. all the way on that one. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's shocking. <laughs> Let's see what we see. They're jostling. They're jostling. Gives them a shove. Whatever. Well, the flag came from the official yep. that was behind the field judge. I don't know. He might have anticipated something that wasn't there. I don't oh, yeah, know. That's a bad call. First and goal for I Georgia. Do, I do know. I think that's a bad call. Uh, I think you're right. Bennett, not first and goal. Overshot. Dominique uh, Kiaris Jackson, I beg your pardon. Still 21 seconds, still two timeouts. Also, with two timeouts, you can still run the ball here, obviously, right? Quarterback draw, and Stetson's very good at running the ball. Gene Steratore agreed with us, by the way, on the offensive pass interference. Oh, that's he just real, let us know from it's me. real brave, Gene. We're out here on our own, man. Let's... Second down a goal. 
Got the big 6-7 matchup here to the top. And Bowers, the other tight end of the slot. Bennett, slant, McConkey, touchdown. Well, as we talk about who he could throw to, Stetson Bennett gets to choose who he wants to throw to. He uses the tight end here, the tight end here, brings him underneath for the easy play. So the big first half continues for Georgia. I wonder if McConkey got dinged on that play a little bit because Kirby went right to him on it. But Lesney in for the point after up and good. Talk about utilizing the final minute of the first half. Georgia couldn't have done it much better. 54 yards and seven plays. Bennett to McConkey. Touchdown dogs. Here, not as disastrous maybe as last year, but certainly not much better. But in a way, remember Florida had the ball with a chance to put points and getting the ball to start the second half, and it turned out to be just the opposite. Right. Couldn't get out as you said. Florida have 17 seconds to work with if they choose to do anything and a couple of timeouts tonight on CBS Sports Network catch a Mountain West matchup Nevada's Wolfpack hits the road they'll take on San Jose State action kicks off at 1030 Eastern tonight well we talked about it in the open Anthony Richardson had to be the centerpiece of the offense for both running and passing for Florida to really stress this Georgia defense. I mean, it's the same story. I mean, first play of the game changed everything. Yep. I'll just keep it on the ground. ETN broke a couple tackles. Nice run of six. And ten seconds to go. Billy Napier, when he talked to us last night, said, I know what's in front of us. We got a tough team we got to play, and we have to recruit. We have to recruit hard. We got to put another class together. Our guys are learning how to practice. They're learning what it takes to be winners. Now we got to give them some help with better players around them. And the guys in red have better players right now. Etienne again, and close to a first down, might have it, but that might be the end of the half as well. And it will be. Top rank Georgia dominating here in Jacksonville through two quarters. Dogs fans are loving it, not so much for the Gators. 28-3 at halftime. For Jenny's halftime interview with Coach Smart, go to Twitter at SEC on CBS. Right now, we send you Adam Zucker on New York studio for the Geico halftime report. But he injured his leg a little bit, and though he's playing through it, it has certainly changed the game plan, I would think, Gary. I, I think so. It hasn't changed Georgia's game plan. No. <laughs> I like that. But, yes, yeah, two first downs. They just, that's tough. You, you just don't have your game plan playing one of the best teams in college football. Yeah, and Georgia's defense looks like Georgia's defense, and they only had two penalties in the game, and it was both on their first drive, and they haven't made a mistake since, except that one interception that... Uh... Take a look at our first half. Trend, Stetson Bennett, a career-high first half of 262. Brock Bowers... <laughs> He continues to be sensational and sometimes lucky, including that bobbled catch on the sideline that could have been picked off, and he took it 73 yards for a touchdown. And Florida just nothing on the ground. Um, they came in leading the country at 6.4 yards a rush, and they would love a 6.4-yard rush sometime in this game. Got a Georgia player down. Can't quite see the number.
We're getting closer to being able to identify it. Yeah, it's a, it's a different 19. Yeah, it's not Brock Bowers. Right. Yeah, he gets hit right here. It's got stood up and just kind of collapses on the hit. He gets driven into the ground. Darius Smith is the man that's down. And Kirby Smart out there. And we'll check on him and get the third quarter going when we come back. Here. Taco Bell went a bit crazy when it's breakfast. It was too much. What you need in the morning is tasty, simple food. Fluffy eggs, sausage, hash browns, and a warm tortilla. They should open a restaurant that only serves those breakfast crunch sticks. You riffing or is this part of the commercial? Will remain radioactive for years to come. Well, thank goodness, it's time for the good news of the week. And boy, do we need it. <laughs> well, this safe driver saved money with the Snapshot app from Progressive. How do you feel? Um, good? He's better than good. He got rewarded for driving safe and driving less. Sorry, Barb, just to confirm, this is the feel-good news of the week? This is what we found. Yay, Snapshot! Darius Smith, the freshman, being helped off the field, injured on kick coverage, and he's heading to the medical tent. And again, bottom of your screen here, number 19 coming down field. And the replay people looked at it and determined that it was, wasn't targeting or anything, but in the process, definitely uh, shaken up, young fella. Yeah, he was stunned. Yeah. It's like the look of a boxer getting off the mat, didn't he? Uh -huh. So here's Florida's first possession now, third quarter, trailing 28 to 3. Here's uh, motion out of the backfield. And a little screen out to ETN, and he's got a first down. Let's check in with Jenny. Yeah, I'm waiting on for some information with Smith, but in the meantime, I did speak with head coach Billy Napier about Anthony Richardson. He said he's A-OK. -okay. There are no restrictions. And being on the sideline in this first half, i got to tell you that it's been status quo over here, guys. He hasn't received any extra attention. He's airing one out long incomplete. So, obviously, it's nothing that can be fixed it's uh, he got hit hard no danger of re hurting it i assume because he's still out there but obviously he's not anthony richardson that we expected not that we saw against tennessee not, anyway not at all no called running plays no big scrambles that time he faked the run as he gave it to etn and he rambles out to the 48 another first down so Trevor Etienne, the freshman, giving him a little spark here. Yeah, good job that time by Torrance, number 54. Helps the center for a second and then comes back on the linebacker. Beautiful job. Richardson, plenty of time. Deep ball, incomplete. Intended for Pearsaw. I think he thinks that was the one that he should have connected. He said, my fault. Yep. It, it, just a tough. I mean, it would have been a great throw again. It's one of the things that, uh, you know, the Alabama secondary back in the day when LSU had those DBs, now Georgia. Okay, they're going to play man on you. They're going to catch and run with you and force you to make a big-time throw. Georgia looks a little, well, now they got everything set defensively. And Montreal Johnson for one, maybe two. Robert Beal made the stop. 
Well, it's going to be a third down to open up the third quarter, third and, third and nine. Two first downs in the first half for Florida. They've already got two on this drive and looking for number three. But they've got to get to the 42 yard line to pick it up. And now here's a design run. And Richardson dragging Bulldogs with him. It's not going to get the first down. But that's the first time he's pulled it and made an effort to run since the first quarter. Another third down stop, though, by this Georgia defense. Florida one for nine on third down in the game. Looks like they're going to go for it. This has nothing to do to me with the analytics. This has to do with 28 to three. Exactly. Fourth down and four. Kirby's going to call timeout. His defense. Oh, oh. yeah. Going to be first That's down. Going to be first down now. So the whistle came late. Some players kept playing. And first down Gators on a timeout. And here's Alexander. Didn't After the hear play, the whistle and tried to back off. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number 99. So think about it, Georgia's only got out. seven Georgia. sacks all the year, okay? And this guy, I got one! Yeah, you know, well, the whistle. Oh, no, yeah. I don't have right, one. Right, right. Richardson's going to feel that one, too. They're asking him if he's all right on the sideline. He's smiling, so that's a good yeah. sign. So they walk it down to the 31. There, Alexander, the freshman. Out of Terrell, Texas, all 305 pounds right in the back of the Florida quarterback. Well, let's see if Florida can take advantage of this. Got a break there on fourth down. Georgia's third penalty, I just mentioned, they only had two in the first quarter on their first drive, so that one is a first down for Florida. Hey, next Saturday, doubleheader for you on CBS, 11.30 Eastern, Air Force takes on Army. Then at 3.30, SEC on CBS features one of the big games of the season. Hendon Hooker leads number three Tennessee into Athens against top-ranked Georgia. That'll be fun next week, doubleheader right here at CBS. Richardson got a guy right in his face. He got rid of it and completes it. That's going to be Xavier Henderson for a decent game. So you really can't see the speed and athleticism of this Georgia defense. They see the play, but they attack the play. Demus Johnson gets in there. And then inside out, Davis misses the tackle. There's two more guys. Nice play by this Florida offense, but they earned every inch of it. They sure did. Second down and six. Chris Smith directing traffic on the back end back there for Georgia from his safety spot. Richardson looking for a block. Got to the edge and got a first down. Tough run. Anthony Richardson. So Florida's got more going on this drive than they had the whole first half. Well, and they've got a quarterback that's willing to run again. Or the play's being called. He's pulling it. I don't know if it's a read or not, but he takes it and then gets out of one tackle and accepts another tackle. It was Bullard again who hit him at the end. He's the one who started this whole thing. <laughs> So in the red zone for the Gators now, they got something working here. Trailing 28 to 3. 11 and a half to go in the third quarter. Again, Georgia running all over the place, getting lined up defensively. Richardson rifles one to the corner. Could have been a touchdown, but it's incomplete to Zipperer. Threw the wrong guy. Right down the middle of Montreal Johnson, I think. I think it was number two. Wide open. Down right down the seam right here. Watch what happens. No one covers him. Turns around, looks back, and goes, oh. Wolf. Well, 
but it's one thing that uh, this Florida offense this year does not do that they've done in the past. They don't use their running backs in the passing game. No, not like they used to. Second and ten from the 18. Three receivers to Richardson's left. This is going to be a run straight up the middle by Johnson to the 15. Picked up three. It'll be third down. So just to give you an example, Naquan Wright, number five for Florida, has led the SEC the last two years in receptions and yardage for a running back for that position. He's got one reception on the year. The leading receiver is Montreal Johnson with six. I mean, this is not that attacking spot in this offense, the running back. Five runs, five throws on this drive so far. Third down and seven. Georgia fans trying to make some noise down in that end zone. Clock winding down, the play clock down to two. Just got it off. ETN got the corner, first down. He sure did, didn't he? Travis Etienne, the true freshman running back, returns kickoffs. You can see his speed get to the corner this time. Misjudged by that Georgia secondary that time. He gets there and makes it. I'm glad you said Travis and I didn't. Oh, did I do Trevor. it the wrong way? Yeah. Well, same stadium, right? <laughs> <laughs> Travis, his brother, plays for the Jaguars. Travis will like that. Yep. First and goal for the Gators. Trying to cut into this Georgia lead. Richardson a run all the way this time puts his head down gets to the three maybe closer to the two Dumas Johnson made the tackle So the fourth down penalty has kept this drive alive and it's a 12 play drive now Georgia hasn't given up a touchdown in the third quarter all year That might change right here. It does ETN touchdown Florida you always love when a team, everybody out here, all the Florida fans, everybody's talking about how can this happen 28-3. But the players on the field go in at halftime and say, you know what, we're going to come out and figure out a way to score some points and make it a game. So far? So good. Just what the Gators needed. A long drive with a touchdown at the end of it. Mahalik's point after is good. And it was started, I believe, by the physicalness of Anthony Richardson. He played physical. It made this Florida offense different. That penalty helped the cause. Gave him a first down. And then they got it down for ETN from three yards out for the touchdown. 28-10. Goodbye, Goodyear. Yeah, he, he watched the first half. He didn't think Florida was going to score, did he? <laughs> Nap time. Yep. I want to watch that Tennessee-Kentucky game. <laughs> we, got them, we got them next week. That's right. Got to get ready for the balls. Kickoff returnable from the 10 for Pierre's Jackson. And only got to about the 23. All right, so Anthony Richardson showed he can be physical. Now can this Florida defense show that they can stop the tight ends? That's because when you take a look at the GMC game changer, number 19 is one. He's got four catches for 125. Half of the receptions for this 7 out of 16 have been to the tight ends. Bowers has been middle, short, and then they went to him long. A little bit of a break there, but he still showed his athletic ability. He had a double catch and a quadruple catch. <laughs> so now let's see what Stetson Bennett and Bowers, who's in motion, can do for Georgia here. Their opening possession of the third quarter. McIntosh. And the ball came out. Still squirting around. Florida's got it. Brenton Cox, I think. Or Trey Dean. I think Bernie, number two, who batted the pass for a touchdown, actually comes from behind and rips it here. Watch him come from behind and rip the ball out. So he's one for two. One bat to Bowers and one forced fumble for the Gators. McClendon had a shot at it, the right tackle. And he just went right over the top of the ball right here. 
And Dean's on the bottom. Trey Dean with 11 tackles and a sack last year against Georgia. Now he's got a fumble recovery that's huge. Two turnovers today now. One the interception and now the fumble. And Florida. This will make it interesting. 28 to 10 early in the third quarter. And a golden opportunity here to take advantage of that turnover. Georgia's defense bulks up and stops the run right there for no gain. That last drive was more than the whole first half. Second down and nine. Richardson in the shotgun set to throw. Looking left the whole way. Goes out in the flat. Complete. And that's Dante Zanders, his tight end. It's going to bring up third down. Yes, watch Osiris Torrance, number 54, back playing for Florida. Missed a week ago. Watch him handle the stunt inside. Pushes off, then he peeks and finds the next blitzer, allows the quarterback to get rid of the football. That is great offensive guard play. He's having a great season for Florida is. Another one of those transfers from Louisiana. Yep. Third down at six. Johnson broke a tackle, got first down, and then some. So how about that? You go transfer to transfer. Louisiana's offense is moving the ball right now. <laughs> it is. Montreal, the Sunbelt Player of the Year as a freshman last year, and a big hole off the left side that time. If and White, number 77 that time, the left guard does his job. First and goal at the, uh, first and 10 at the 12. Richardson with a run, and he backpedals for two or three. Again, this Florida offense, when you establish the quarterback as a weapon, opens up everything else. At the 10. Anderson in motion. Richardson to the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for shorter. Keeley Ringo back there in coverage. And it's third down. Keeley did a good job. He actually had the man in the flat way out here. But he keeps his eyes on the quarterback and is able to come in and make the play. Great break on the ball. Got a hand on it. And forces third down and eight. Gators need to get to the two-yard line for a first down. Zipper, the tight end, moves over to the right side. That's where Johnson's lined up next to Richardson. It'll be Johnson trying to weave his way and going nowhere. A lot of scrimmage, that's it. Now the score looks bad, but a field goal here makes it a two-score game. We get it down to 15. If I'm Billy Napier, I would take the he is going to take the points. Absolutely. You've got to reward the turnover. A little shorter, I might go for it, but this is too much. You got to make it a two-score game, plenty of time. Put the pressure back on Georgia. Mahalik already hit a career long today, 52. This one should be easy for him. Former walk on. Six out of ten on the year. This will be a 26 yard field goal. And it's up and good. So to at least force Georgia to continue to run their passing offense and not just be able to run out the clock by making short first downs in the run game. First they got the fumble recovery by Trey Dean. That led him down the field 17 yards to get three more. 28-13. 
answered. Here is it. CBS Wednesday Survivors All New with the newly merged tribes. The game is leveling up and taking a new turn. Don't miss the surprising twists on a new Survivor Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Here's Jackson from the two, not even getting to the 15, or barely. And Georgia's going to start in a little bit of a hole, and they've seen their lead dwindle down to 15. Let's test your knowledge right now with today's AFLAC trivia question. Which three annual regular season games take place at neutral sites? It's a dying breed, folks. But there's three pretty good ones still remaining. All right, like you said, Gary, this doesn't mean Georgia can just start running the football I, all over the they've place. They've got to use their full offense. This Cater defense smells that they can get their team back in the game. Play action, Bennett throws way over Brock Bauer's head. And you can see a feel like Todd Munkin thought the same thing. We've got to go back to our go-to guys on the play-action pass and get it to the tight ends. Bowers coming across. Open, easy throw, not a good throw. Mm -hmm. A little more pressure right now on this Georgia offense. Always more pressure when you have the lead trying to hold on to the lead. Cocky in motion for Georgia. McIntosh on the carry, trying to make up for the fumble and runs out for 12 or 13 in the first down. Well, they've been running to the right side most of the game, but this time they go left behind Truss and Broderick Jones to the left side of the line. They both do a great job. Remember a year ago, Broderick Jones came into that national championship game in late in that game, and Georgia just stuffed it down Alabama's throat. He was one of those late substitutions. Started the last four regular season games, he did, Jones, but then came back with Salier, and he came in late and made a difference in that physicalness of that Georgia line. They'll run it again to the left side. McIntosh broke another tackle, a stiff arm, and he goes for about 17 more. Really love that they've gone back to McIntosh on this, too. You know, he's their best athlete now. He's their best receiver as a running back. Get him back in the game. Not one turnover. You're, you know, banned to the bottom of the bench, basically. Two big-time runs there. And now he'll get a breather. As he picked up 15 on the last one. Dejon Edwards into the Georgia backfield for him. That's done it under center. With the play fake. And a deep ball, and it's intercepted. Picked off. Amari Bernie, who almost had one earlier. And now he's got one. There's a flag now. So Georgia tried to go wheel route. And if that sounds familiar, that was two years ago. Kyle Trez burned Georgia with the wheel route. But this time, Bernie has a great coverage, and it's one Stetson Bennett should not have thrown, not even tried to throw this one. First down call, you got the lead, drop it off, get it to be second and three, even if you scramble for a couple of yards. Receiver cuts inside, and you make a dangerous throw, and you pay for it. So it's a long conversation among the officials here. And here's the call. Well, we're still going to wait a bit. Yeah, they're deciding if they should pick up the flag or not right now. Was it late enough? They're calling a late hit, I think, and they don't know. The result of the play is an interception by the defense. After the play, personal foul, under Sarah Ruffus, intercepting team number 22. Half the distance to the goal. First half. Rashad Torrance is going to be called for the penalty, so it's going to still be Florida ball. So here's Bernie right here. Watch the wheel come out. Watch him cut inside. Bernie makes a great athletic move, cuts in for the ball, and a late hit. That was number 22 on Dejon Edwards coming in right there. Yeah, I think that's a good two call. Just unnecessary roughness, right? Yep. Don't need the hit. Play was over. Jader's got it back, though, when we come back. Detson Bennett, who came in having been intercepted only once all season, 
has two in this game. And five in three, three career games against the Gators. Now, after the penalty, Florida would have had a lot better field position about the 33 yard line. As it is, they start at the 18. But they scored ton of and on unanswered points. And Lorenzo Lingard on the carry. His first appearance in the backfield. Saw Lingard in the LSU tape here and a few more opportunities to play in that LSU game. Transfer from Miami, I believe. I'm trying to think of it. Yes, I think he was. So three of the last four drives have resulted in points for the Gators, and they're looking for more here with four minutes to go, third quarter. Henderson in motion. Richardson, late pressure coming. And he just gets rid of it. First saw that time, number one, the wide receiver from Florida. Wants a nice little button hook right here. He had him if he throws it on time, but the pressure inside forces Anthony Richardson out of the pocket and just throw it away. Dumas. Again, not a sack, right. but affect the quarterback. Dumas Johnson, the guy that was putting the heat on him. Third down and six. Georgia trying to get a stop and avoid any more Florida points off that turnover. Richardson all day and rifles it down the sideline. This is Xavier Henderson and he is gone. Touchdown, Florida, 78 yards. So there might have been some Florida fans that left, but the Florida football team didn't leave. No, they didn't. Watch the safety. He thinks it's going short. He doesn't play the deep man. His angle costs the touchdown. Xavier Henderson, his second touchdown catch of the year, and it's a huge one. The Career safety. long for both the quarterback and the wide receiver. And the safety was Malachi Starks. Starks, a true freshman five-star safety. But on that one, he didn't read it properly. To try to make it a one-score game. Mahalik's extra point is good. That cuts it to eight. And a flag down. It's going to be Georgia offsides. And remember, in this situation against Tennessee, Billy Napier went for two. Offside, defense number three, lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined. He's going to leave it alone. The try is good. So a little different. That didn't work out for him last time against Tennessee. This time... Big throw, great read. Gators got it going. 17 straight for Florida. They're right back in it. Boy, is Anthony Richardson going to play? Should they put a new guy in? Should they let Kitten to play? Let Anthony Richardson get healthy? Well, I'd say 40% of the Florida fans are leaving, and they feel like those people that left Kirk Gibson's home run before they <laughs> This thing ends up with a Florida win. Those people are going to feel yep. really bad. They're probably going to feel bad tomorrow either way, if you know what I mean. Garris Jackson on the kick return. Oh, man, he got whacked again. This is the sequence at the end of the second quarter that we're talking about. A couple of key plays. First of all, Gary and I thought this was offensive pass interference. They called it on Florida. And then Stetson Bennett on the quick slant right back to the same guy, McConkey, for a touchdown. And Georgia, it was all Georgia at that point. And yeah. now it's totally different. Yeah, it was all Georgia at 21-3, but then it became 28-3. And you're thinking, oh, there's there's no way. Unless Anthony Richardson, you know, comes out like Superman and takes to dead. And he has. He really has. But the two turnovers, two drives, two turnovers for Georgia. One of them was a fumble by this guy, McIntosh. And he blasts his way for another 11 yards in the first down. So in this half, Georgia's first drive was one play to McIntosh and a fumble. 
And then the second drive was four plays and an interception. And McIntosh has had three big runs since that fumble, including this one. And in, in great, I mean, you can feel the Florida defense just with more juice. But both of those turnovers on first down, it was a really, really bad throw by Stetson Bennett. Not first down, you got to be safe on that type of throw. Dejon Edwards shifts sides with Bennett in the backfield. First down at the 33, and it'll be Edwards. Nothing, nothing. Lost a yard or two. Here's the plays we were talking about. This was McIntosh getting stripped from behind. Bernie made them both. Yep. Bernie made the forced fumble and then a beautiful interception. So he, he tapped one up. Good defense on that play. That's really an odd play where he tapped it and Bowers grabs it. Remember, Bernie's also the guy that had the game-winning interception against Utah. Yep. That sealed it with an end zone interception against Utah in week one. Second down and 12. Bennett hasn't thrown since that last interception. Fires this one. And caught. Boy, that was a tight window. Rosemary Jack Saints on the receive again. Well, remember two years ago, Jack Saint broke his leg on a touchdown play. He caught it. He cradled it. Look at George is going to go quick, try to keep the replay official from stopping it. Edwards got the corner. Dejan Edwards, a little stutter step before he's pushed out of bounds. So a 19-yard pickup to Rosemary Jack Saint, and then a big run by Edwards, and Georgia's got it moving down the field. I'll tell you, the big tight end, Washington, watch him, number zero right there, come out to the outside. You got McClendon doing his job, Washington doing his. If you're going to catch the ball in this Georgia offense, you better block, because they got you out there all game. So they got the 19-yard reception, a 20-yard run, and they're down at the 30-yard line, first down. Same look. Bowers in the tight slot, Washington behind him. A little late with my circle. <laughs> and McConkey on the move. They'll keep it on the ground, and it's McIntosh again for eight more. Rashad Torrance finally brought him down, but Kenny McIntosh got a sweat going right now. He did, and he got a nice pickup block this time from Washington again on the inside blitz. Just enough to clear it out. You do those run blitzes, and they've got that H back right there. No chance for a tackle. Florida changes up some personnel defensively. Georgia will stay with what they've got out there. Including Edwards with Bennett in the backfield. They'll give it to him again. And again he comes through and he'll score. Touchdown, Georgia. Blasting off the right side and the dogs for the 22-yard touchdown by Edwards. Well, watch Xavier Truss and Brock Bowers run the counter this time. Left guard and H-back number 19 does more than just catch passes. Watch this kick out and Bowers comes around. The old counter. Watch it. Kick out by Truss. 19 gets up in the hole. Another good block. Beautifully done. Boy, some chunk plays in that drive for Georgia, both on the ground and through the air. But Lesney in for the point after. Up and good. 78 yards in just six plays. Dejon Edwards does the final 22. Todd Munkin saying, yep, we called the right play. On Florida on that drive. They did all of them. Running in both directions. Both tight ends getting key blocks on that drive. Florida will come out to the 25. A little bit earlier, we asked you the AFLAC trivia question. AFLAC. Which was, which three annual regular season games take place at neutral sites? Well, we got one right here. Oklahoma and Texas at the State Fair, and the Cotton Bowl, and Army and Navy, which will be back in Philadelphia this December. We'll be there for you. And uh, this pair of lucky announcers have done all those games. That's right. <laughs> They've all, all been a lot of fun. The fans are having more fun now. They were pretty subdued. Could hear a pin drop in here at halftime. And as Gary said, a lot of the folks in orange and blue took off and probably wish they could get back in the stadium now. Richardson getting some heat. Pocket starting to collapse. A late throw, but a good one. Complete to shorter. 
Well, Malachi Starks again. The safety runs right by the receiver. Shorter coming across. You just can't cover grass. You got a receiver coming right at you. Pick him up, find him, and cover him. Pick up a 20. Now back to Johnson for two or three. That might bring the third quarter to a close. So Florida with a big third quarter to get back in the game. Even though they still trail by a couple of scores. A lot of football left. End of three. Georgia 35. Florida 20. Fourth quarter is coming up. Big third quarter for Florida, 17 points, and that's a two-score game. Anthony Richardson, who's been a different quarterback in that third quarter when he started running more and directing this Florida offense and putting points on the board. Here he is on the first snap of the fourth. Going to go long and incomplete, and a flag flies in. Going to be pass interference on Georgia. Again, if you're going to move the ball against this Georgia defense, you must attack the corners. A little bit of a bump. And Lassiter. There is no foul for pass interference. Uh, they picked it up. Down. So my little bit of a bump might have changed their mind. Right there, right? <laughs> he heard you though. It was just, it was just a little bump. <laughs> you didn't bump. hear me on the last one. I'll yeah, tell you that. yeah. But you know, a football game broke out there in the third. It quarter. did. You know, I really admire these players. You know, we we judge them so much. They're not as good as Georgia. Their recruiting class. But they keep playing. Games over. Everybody thinks. Just keep going. Just keep going. Something good might happen. A couple turnovers. Back in the game. Yep. An interception with a fumble. Georgia came back with an answer of their own though, with that. Six play drive that went 75 yards. But Edwards capped off. So they had an answer. Now do they have a stop as Florida's near midfield? They do have a stop. So four for 14 on third down. This Georgia defense has done the job, but. With that play call, you could almost sense that Billy Napier was going to go for it on fourth down. Apparently he is from his own 49-yard line. Fourth down and six. Had to figure you got to pull all the stops. I guess this is one of those stops that's being pulled. I don't know. There's 14 and a half minutes left. I don't know. I don't get the analytics stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't what, What's wrong with the punt here? I mean, Stetson Bennett's throwing an interception. Fourth and six. If we give Georgia a short field, if they can get a stop. And they almost had Richardson, and now they do. He throws it away. Yeah, they bring him down, and Georgia takes over. Yeah, I don't get it. I'm sorry. We've got Georgia with two turnovers That's in the third the quarter. The ball back beyond the line of scrimmage. Stetson Bennett has thrown one pass since then. He completed it across the middle. I'm like punting it and saying, let's see if he can do it again. Right. Dumas Johnson came in to wrap up Richardson as he threw it out of bounds. And so the first year head coach of the Gators that goes for it, frustrated on one side, jubilation a little bit. If you want to call that Kirby Smart jubilation on the other side, Georgia takes over on a short field just outside of 48. Branson Robinson in the Georgia backfield. McConkey on an end around. Brad McConkey Bowers trying to get a block for him out there, and he got a piece of one at least. So just to let you know, sometimes not everybody's a five-star. Lad McConkey, his first and only Power Five scholarship offer was from Georgia. Kirby went and saw him play basketball right. and decided, yeah, I like this guy. <laughs> Going for Darnell Washington, just kind of throwing it high and hoping he can come up and grab it, but incomplete. And third down. That was that was dangerous. If that ball would have been on target, Dean would have had a chance there, wouldn't it? So the first half was big, not so much in the second half for Stetson Bennett. 
I just wonder if that wasn't an RPO because Stetson looked over and go, well, I had it, I had it. You know, you wonder if it was one of those plays tacked onto a run play. Florida's front with a shift defensively. They're going to bring an extra man to Conkey. Wide out screen. Got a block that time from Bowers. First down, Georgia. Yeah, both of the tight ends that time. Again, Washington gets the first block. He'll get this one, and then Bowers kicks out. That's pretty nice. You go. It looks like you go trips formation, but two of your best blockers are out there. It's the new. The, I tell you, we saw Jalen Hyatt play that slot position with speed, yeah. and now we're seeing a different type of slot with power and athletic ability. McIntosh in the backfield with Bennett will get the carry. Had some big runs in the second half after that fumble. This time he gets about three before they stand him up. And the clock works its way under 13 minutes. Stetson Bennett, birthday number 25 was yesterday. This would be a nice present to himself. If he can keep it together, hold it together, and hold this offense together. Want one more scoring drive. He throws out of the RPO and up to the sideline, incomplete. Yeah, I think that was a busted play by the receiver that time, but I'm telling you, Kirby is going, just hand the ball off. <laughs> you wonder if he's going to Todd. Well, we'll never know. They don't tell us anything. No. If they're going to Todd. Todd, you got any of those run plays where we don't have a pass play attached to it because <laughs> we would like to run the ball, get in field goal range at least. And now McIntosh comes out as a wide receiver up top. So this will be another pass play unless it's a Stetson Bennett run. Third down and seven. Zips it down the middle into traffic. Incomplete. Through behind him. Trey Dean again made the play. And we got an injured player down at the 40. Breaks out. Ball's in front of him. See, another thing on that play, if you looked at Rosemary Jack Saints' pass, he kind of fades away from the quarterback as well. If he comes straight across there, it's an easier throw. As he fades, it's a tougher completion for the quarterback, but it definitely behind. I think it's Amarius Mims who's shaken up on the play for Georgia, the right tackle. And they're going to take off his, or at least unstrap his left knee brace. Big fella, sophomore out of Cochran, Georgia. Mims, part of that rotation and right tackle. He's, gets from behind again. The pass, the rusher from the opposite side gets the hit. They'll get the big fella up, but we'll be right back. HG Hotels and Resorts game recap. Two touchdowns, two interceptions for Stetson Bennett. Georgia had a big lead at halftime, 28 to 3. A couple of takeaways, though, led to 17 Gator points. Dejon Edwards, a couple rushing touchdowns, including a 22 yarder the last time Georgia had the ball, but now they find themselves with a fourth down and seven. Yeah, field goal here. Maybe they feel he's out of range, but a well, field goal here would almost ice the game. 18 I don't, point lead. I, I don't get this either. Podlesny's career long is 53, which he hit against Cincinnati in a well, bowl game a couple years ago. So Billy Napier gambles. If he gets away with this with no points, it's going to be an amazing gamble for him. Well, Georgia's perfect on fourth down this year. Let's see if they've got another one in them. Fourth down and seven. All man to man coverage. McConkey in motion. Blitz coming off the edge. Flags are down. Might be a free play. Bowers has got it to the four yard line. Gamble pays off. He does again, shows his ball skills as he turns for the ball. Remember, his eyes will be moving as he turns to the outside. It was a free play, like Ness said. Back shoulder, a spinner. And our athlete was better than their athlete. If you're Georgia on that call. Bowers just keeps adding to his huge day. Gets it to the four yard line. First and goal. 
Both tight ends shift over from left to right. Darnell Washington the inside of the two. Bowers the outside. Kenny McIntosh in the backfield with Stetson Bennett. He'll get the carry. And he'll get the touchdown. Wouldn't give up. Well, he wouldn't give it up. And Broderick Jones, number 59, did not give up either. He blocked, and then watch at the end when he shoves him in. Here he is, right here. Check it out. They run right at him. Willick, number 77, gets a good block. And then at the end, Jones goes, let me help you in. And he does. Brenton Cox trying to hold on for dear life and just too many bodies helping McIntosh to the end zone. Remember, he's the guy that fumbled earlier and the game got close. And since that time, he's been running like his pants are on fire. Extra point. Up and good. 11-44. Remember, Florida went for it on fourth down in their own territory. At the 49-yard line, Georgia got the stop. Kirby went for it on fourth down. McIntosh makes the Gators pay. It's 42 to 20, Georgia. Line ended up paying off as Bennett hooked up with Bowers again to get him down close, and Kenny McIntosh did the rest. And just remember, had it not hooked up, it was a free play. It was a five-yard yep. penalty, and then they would have decided they were going to kick a shorter field goal or go for it again. Second kind of spinning catch for Bowers, one-on-one. -on -one. Keep it to the outside. Give some space for the quarterback to throw it. That's what Bowers did a great job. And from the pylon, you can see there's about five, six yards to the outside space for the quarterback to put it to the sideline. And Kirby with a smile. Yep. And Brock Bowers, nice catch. Our at and 5G pylon cam. Bowers just got such great body control. Yep, and hand-eye coordination right. while he's doing it. And then size enough, he got the block on the touchdown run. Speed to match up, tough to match up with. Richardson on first down, fires down the middle, completes. Ricky Pearsaw. That'll move the change for the Gators. A lot of time left, pick up with 19 on that one. Out to the 44. Empty backfield this time for Richardson. Four-man Georgia rush. Running out of time. Has to throw it to the sideline. Let's check in with Jenny. Yeah, quick update on outside linebacker Darius Smith. He's the one that took that hard hit to the head and neck area in the opening kickoff of the second half. He was helped off the field into the injury tent. He's been in the locker room since, guys. Obviously, he is out for this game. All right, and I'm sure they're doing a concussion check out him because he was really dinged up on that play. As we were talking about, not a lot of sacks for Georgia, but they affect the quarterback, and they have been collapsing that pocket pretty soon. They're going to get to Richardson if he takes too long to throw. They're coming again. He has to flush out of the pocket, and this time he'll turn the wheels on, and first down. So just to give you an example of how explosive Richardson is, and he didn't show it in the first half when he got dinged. So far this year, he's had four rushes of over 30 yards as a quarterback, most of them coming on called passes just like this. You see number 78, Nazir Stackhouse, actually pursued all the way down to get that tackle on Richardson. That's a big fella moving and, fast. And, and you would think he'd have no chance to catch up. Right. You know? First down. Side on throw out, complete to Burke. Another first down for Florida. Yeah, good, good read that time. Numbers, only one defender, two receivers to the outside. This is just an all-out quarterback. I'm going to throw it to you. Misalignment by this Georgia defense. And the option to just take it gets a first down for the Gators. 
Georgia only giving up nine points a game. They've given up 20 to Florida, and the Gators are driving again. ETN blasts through a hole. And another first down. Well, Gary, again, Torrance number 54. Watch his action. Come off one block and then get inside on the linebacker number 10. I mean, this guy's 350 pounds. He helps, helps, then finds the linebacker. Beautiful job. ETN got 14 to the 14. First half, Florida. I'll give it to him again. This time, a loss on the play. Well, Stackhouse got one there and he didn't have to run very far. <laughs> Georgia with a big halftime lead. Florida put up 17 unanswered. Georgia scored the last 14, but Florida driving again. And we're approaching the nine-minute mark. Let me tell you one thing, Billy Napier's got to love the way his teams continue to fight in this you, game. You know, Keeler. Richardson, too high, too wide, and complete. Tended for zipper. I know there's been a lot of talk about Anthony Richardson could go high in the draft. He's one of those guys to me that could use another year of oh, college football. Absolutely. Don't think? I don't I don't see it. I mean, I think he's really gifted, but well, if he sticks around like Hendon Hooker and somebody like that, he could be really special. Absolutely. A lot of reps, go through spring ball, throw right. the ball, get the feel of those linebackers and the holes where to throw it. Third down and eleven. ETN flushes out of the backfield. Richardson waits, waits, throws to the end zone. We're going to have a flag. Nope. Incomplete. Ricky Pearsaw. And Bullard was a guy in coverage. Javon Bullard. Javon Bullard. We called his number a lot, haven't we? He's been. That's perfect coverage that time. Nowhere for that ball to be fit, fitted in. So here's fourth down. And again. They go for it. Fourth down at 11. Nine minutes and change remaining. All three wide outs to the left side of Richardson. Here comes a full blitz from the dogs. He got away and lobs one. Jump ball. Caught. Intercepted. Touchback. Georgia's got it back. Malachi Starks. And Malachi Starks got beat for a touchdown, but on that one, Anthony Richard did, did exactly what he had to. A free safety blitz. Nowhere to go. Save it. Throw it up. Maybe your guy can make a play. Fourth down throw. And Starks comes back and gets it. I don't know if it came down or not. Did the ball hit the ground? No matter. It did. That's oh, not it did. be an interception. Either way, Georgia's the taking over. You got a fourth down play. Again, in this game, this Georgia defense, and it's been the story in the Florida Georgia game the last three years. Four for 15, the Gators are on third down. And you see Anthony Richardson working on his own right knee over there on the sideline. Yes, we were here three years ago when Jake Fromm put on a show when they were 12 for 18. That's right. They won that game. And then Kyle Trask, kind of a payback. They were 7 for 16 when Georgia was 2 for 13. The third down in this game has been big in all of these matchups between Georgia and Florida. The review is going on. And again, we could plainly see that even though he did a nice acting job, Malachi tried to keep the ball underneath him, and it touches down right there. Yep, and then he scoops luck. it up. Without replay, they wouldn't change it, right? Absolutely. Nope. <laughs> After review, the ruling is the ruling is an incomplete pass. The first down, Georgia. So the dogs are going to get it one way or another. And Stetson Bennett and the Georgia offense comes back on the field. And they'll take over at the 15-yard line. Yeah. Well, since this game a year, uh, a couple years ago, stranger things have happened. A coaching change on one side, a national championship on the other. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, when we were in this game a year ago, even through the first half, you know, 3-0, I'm thinking, 
Would anybody be thinking that Dan Mullen would be the coach the next yeah. year? And then all oh, of a wait. sudden, he just went the opposite direction. And Anthony Richardson got popped again. This time, the same leg. We'll just keep it on the ground here. Yard or two for Branson Robinson. Dejon Edwards, a leading rusher today with two touchdowns and 86 on the ground. Brock Bowers, another Brock Bowers type day, 154 and one. I know if I'm uh, Todd Munkin, if I'm Kirby Smart, I'm challenging my offense to see if you can take five or six minutes off the right. clock. Might be a game where you have to close out a football game. Doesn't mean you can't throw the little dink passes, but I'd say we want to keep the clock moving. We want first downs. Let's not let the other team back on the field. And their number three tailback, Scott Fresh Legs. Rumbling his way out across the 30. Branson Robinson. Another one of those true freshman recruiting class players. They keep loading up. Destination spot, Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia. They just keep coming and coming. This, this guy, Branson Robinson, they're kind of calling him like a mini Nick Chubb. Ratledge, number 69, just kind of takes that nose tackle and pushes him five yards deep. Help from Van Pran, but uh, the road grader, the big right guard who they missed a year ago, is back. First down, the 32. Robinson, left side this time. Another five or six yard run. Invesco brings you today's scholar athlete for Florida Brenton Cox Jr., who's played at both these teams, both these schools. And Cedric Van Pran, and Gary just talked about for Georgia. Invesco is proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation of $1,000 to both Florida and Georgia's general scholarship fund. And the clock is in Georgia's favor right now as it's going to work its way under seven minute mark. Right. And then again, this is one of those things where you should be telling your quarterback, I want you to, in your mind, thinking, you know, make it's a one score game. Let's see if we can take this clock all the way down. Snap it with five or six seconds to go on the play clock, not before. Drain it, drain it, drain it. It's exactly the direction the Stetson Bennett got on the sideline. And so he's just standing there waiting for that clock and waiting for more time to work off the game clock itself before he probably hands it off to Branson Robinson again. And he will. And Robinson only got a yard or so that time. Jenny. I was talking to Stetson Bennett earlier this week just about this rivalry. He grew up watching it, of course, but he said his parents said it was a little too rambunctious for him to attend until he got older. <laughs> he said, but he he knows the hatred from a young age. His first memory attending the game was 10 years ago, 2012. Aaron Murray hitting Malcolm Mitchell in that fourth quarter to seal the game for the dogs, guys. Well, he is all bulldog, always has been, even though there was a well, one-year stop in junior college. Yeah, but well, could have been a Louisiana Raging Cajun. That was very close. Signing day. Billy Napier had him committed. Signing day thought they had a signature on in the last second could Bill, be smart Billy said I went to bed that night thought I had my quarterback woke up the next morning and realized could be smart had made a phone call to Stetson Bennett and that was that yeah and I go Billy did you tell him you'll never play there and he goes <laughs> I used all my skills I had but I'm not going to say what I told him <laughs> and he said did Stetson make that call he said absolutely the kid's so classy he wouldn't have left me hanging he made a call and said coach my dream has come true. I got an offer from Georgia, and the rest is history. Well, think about the task and the challenge that Stetson Bennett chose. He knows he's going to be competing against five-star quarterbacks. Jake Fromm still had another year. Justin Fields had just transferred, but you know, another one's coming over the horizon. Right. Another five-star coming right behind you. And he might not have been a five-star then, but he's got a bunch of stars right now if you're a Georgia fan. With that national championship and the rings that go with it. And now Branson Robinson down the sideline. Big run again. So everybody getting in the act of the Georgia backfield. I think Willick, number 77, is going to get called here on a hold yeah, right at is. the end of the play. I do owe Willick, even though I'm going to call him out on this hole. I owe him one of this. Earlier on the touchdown run, I thought it was Truss in the game. It was actually Willick. So, <laughs> all right, I'm, I got to call the holding here, but I'm going to come back and say, 
I was looking a little bit too much at Bowers, and I just assumed it was Trust, and it was actually Willock on that block for the touchdown. So we'll give him some love and take it away. Yep. And we'll take that run away of Robinson's. So Kenny McIntosh, a fumble, but then a huge comeback and some big runs. Dejon Edwards, a couple of touchdowns today, and 86 yards on the ground, and now it's Branson Robinson's turn. The freshman out of Canton, Mississippi. This time dropped for a loss, though, by Trey Dean, who's a good tackler from the safety spot. 25 years old as of yesterday, older than 11 NFL starting <laughs> quarterbacks and some pretty notable ones right there. Jalen Hurts, Tua Tagovailoa, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert. So this one's going to feel good. Two years ago, didn't feel so good for Stetson in this game. They came back. Redemption last year. The Georgia won 34 to 7. And now with four minutes to go, a 42 to 20 lead. And again, just trying to chew clock up here. Although they will throw. And he's going to go along near sideline, just over the outstretched oh, arms of Aaron oh, Smith. Another flag on this? So the official right on the sideline. A little hand fighting going on there. Ooh, I don't know. They're going to call it on Jason Marshall. Holding. Defense number three, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. I wonder what Gene thinks off the record of that one. To tell you. Off the record? Yeah, well, he's, you know, he did it before. <laughs> See, I'm thinking he might be sitting there going, hope they don't come to me on this one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> He's got a cup of coffee in the microwave back right. in New York. He didn't want any part He's of this. Ready to watch Tennessee Kentucky. <laughs> so first down at the 41. Robinson puts his head down and runs right into big number 21, Desmond Watson. Tonight, about an hour from now on CBS, the best two women's soccer teams in the country compete for a title in prime time the 2022 ally financial nwsl championships tonight on cbs a champion will be crowned tonight in prime time down will be under three minutes on the next snap and bennett will set up on the shotgun put robinson to his right Brock Bowers in motion, and it gives it off to Robinson anyway. He's just trying to find a way to backpedal for about five yards. What a play. Now, I know they got help from the pass interference call, but this is mission accomplished for this drive for Georgia right here. They're going to at least, they've got a, what, almost a seven-minute drive? Like you said, that's how you put people away when you have to. Great balance, keeps his hand down, just keeps churning, and then starts backpedaling. Okay, this guy's going to be good. I think so. A couple of years. <laughs> I think he's pretty good right now. <laughs> we, we might not be here in two years, but he will be. <laughs> Third down and four. He's got Edwards back in there, flag down. Going against Georgia. He's built some program, hasn't he? Sure has. You know, Georgia always had the players that just didn't quite put it completely together. Legal formation. Offense, more than four players on offensive backfield. This penalty has declined. Fourth down. So it's fourth down. And the offense stays on the field. Yeah, and with declining the penalty, that'll run the clock. Play clock's going to be at 10 here. And it's fourth down. <laughs> They're perfect on the season on fourth down. Eight for eight. Fourth down and three if they go. And they will. Nope, maybe not. Timeout just before the 30, 40 second clock. 
Well, they used all the clock they could. Kirby Smart calls a timeout. And with 1.39 to go, if they do indeed go on fourth down and convert, that'll be the ball game on CBS. Well, I'll tell you, a team that's no longer a ghost is Tennessee. They're going to show up. Then they'll be right in front of you. No hiding for Tennessee anymore. And they've got Kentucky tonight. Then they've got these guys in Athens next week. And that's where we'll be. Now, Georgia's converted on fourth down and one. Quarterback sneak. And fourth down and seven, a 29-yard pass. Two for two today, eight for eight on the year. Fourth down and three here. That's in Bennett and completes it to Big Darnell Washington to drop the ball. And they're going to call it incomplete. Yep, they are. Could have finished the game, and you know that was the whole dialogue during the timeout. Let's finish this game on the field. Perfect play call. Got who you want. Stetson delivers it, catches it. Just didn't have it long enough, I guess. Well, I don't get in, Cox. One, two, spin. I thought he fumbled in the Triple Post Game Show presented by Rocket Mortgage. Florida takes over after Georgia's failed fourth down, their first one of the year that they haven't converted. So Florida's got all the timeouts, 92 seconds to work with, and they trail by 22. First down from the 34. Richardson down the middle and completes it. First down. Pick up of 11. And Georgia with a player down. Ryan Davis, the injured party. Played a lot with Smile Munden having been injured and didn't play a week ago. Coming in from the tackle on the right side. It's twisted. Yeah. Just caught his leg on the tackle. And that's what. He and Malachi Starks sort of got their legs tangled up Absolutely. right there. Absolutely. That's when he gets off balance. The left leg goes way out of whack and then he lands on his knee funny like that. And they're going to help him up. He kind of gives a nod. Yep, let's go. Well, next week, pretty big game right here on CBS. Tennessee, who we saw beat Alabama, hand Alabama their only loss of the year. Both undefeated as of right now. And Georgia still will be in a minute and a half. In Tennessee, they'll have to discuss that with Kentucky Wildcats tonight. Ritson deep down the middle of the near side, I should say, and incomplete. Again, he's been on three or four of those. Anthony Richardson feeling bad about a throw where he could have had it this time with Burke, but it was, again, it's the same old thing. If you're playing defense, you're forcing that quarterback, and again, he was pushed right to the sideline there. There was a window of about a foot and a half, 40 yards downfield. Jalen Carter in the middle of that group on the Georgia sideline able to play today. That's great news for the Georgia defense. Richardson again sort of lofts it and got it complete. Same play just about. And Xavier Henderson with the catch. This time threw it short. Xavier Henderson, yep, left foot comes down. It's all you need is one. Pick up a 35. And they're back in the red zone. From the 19. Florida not done yet. Georgia's defense trying to close this out. But Richardson's making it hard on him. And now they close it out. There's the sack they've been waiting for. And it's Michael Williams. Yeah, Florida's going to take a timeout. But this time the help had to go outside of Chambliss and then inside the beat to get the 
nickel pass rush group in there that time and they get one. Georgia's defense comes in highly ranked, highly rated. They do a lot of different things. Yeah, a little different. They don't dominate though the way they did a year ago, right? I yeah. mean, they're good players, but not where you can walk out there and go, you know, how are we going to move the ball against these guys? But I do agree with you. Jalen Carter back might be as good a news as anything in this football game for Georgia. I would assume with as fast as Tennessee throws that football inside, you need that inside pass yeah. that Carter could have could applied in this game. So second down and 20 after the sack. Floated out of two timeouts in one minute to play. Kirby Smart still directing traffic over there for that defense. As Richardson drops to throw, pressure coming again. Down he goes again. Now they're putting Sam Chambliss, who got close on the last play. He did. Yes, he, he got did. It. He got home this time. He drew two blocks last time to help with the sack. This time, a little bit of a delayed blitz gets in there and gets the sack. He pulled a muscle on I that think play. He might have yeah. Tweaked his hamstring coming around that corner that low. Yes. Third down and 26. Richardson, and now he's going to try to run with it, get what he can, and get out of bounds at the 25. It'll be fourth down. The worst start for Florida since they started 0-5 in 1979. Just, what, two years ago, they had a chance to beat Alabama, and Kyle Trask right down there at the end of the game. Yep. Lots changed since then. Yep. So might be the final snap here for the Gators on fourth down and 17. Yeah. Richardson has to throw it away. That's the ball game. Well, I'm going to give the Gators a lot of credit. I mean, it's 28-3. A lot of fans that really don't under sport, understand sports go, you know, why are we even playing? Who cares? Turn it off. But when you're lining up and you're playing and you have pride being with your buddies, they fought the second half. I give them a lot of credit. That's a good good thing for the future, a good sign that Billy Napier has a lot of guys that are willing to fight. He just needs better players. Yep. Well, that's going to be Georgia's fifth win in the last six outings. In this series, an 8 0 for the 10th time in school history. Third time in the last six years. Victory formation for Stetson Bennett. And Georgia, 8 0, 5 0 in conference play. Tennessee's next. Couple of misfires for Stetson Bennett today, but still a couple touchdown passes.